Uh, well, let's speak now to Hampshire Police and Crime Commissioner Donna Jones, uh, who joins us. And, uh, Donna, similar uh, sentiments expressed by the judge, saying that obviously the warning signs were there and weren't acted on. And this ties into the whole incidence now of um, this uh, red flag, I think, that they, they talk about with these um, indecent exposure, um, which at one time was, was dealt with as a nuisance, wasn't it? Absolutely, and I, and I do very much concur with those very impactful victims' impact statements that have been read out today in court, particularly, as you've just said there, the the, uh, the incidents at the McDonald's, the repeated incidents, and the, the cyclist that was flashed um, and the incident in the wood. You know, these are really significant incidents themselves in terms of flashing. Very often, someone who is a, a sexual uh, perpetrator, a sexual offender of crime, um, one of the first incident, incidents will be um, pleasuring themselves, masturbating, perhaps in a car, but in a public place in a car park. Then they'll flash. Um, and some of these things then do often lead on to uh, sexual touching um, and or to more serious sexual assaults and sadly to rapes. And that's why it's so important that the police do prioritise responding to incidents of flashing, because very often it can be almost a, a cry for help from somebody who is uh, thinking of committing some of the most atrocious offences that you can and commit it um, to another human being. Yeah, and of course the, the additional uh, reflection that um, this this cyclist uh, who, who suffered this, he was actually technically on duty at the time that that happened. Yes, I mean, the key thing here, I think, with Wayne Cousins, and if we revert this back to the incident with Sarah Everard, mm. the reason that Sarah, you know, a young woman with her life ahead of her, who was an intelligent person, the reason she got in that car on that dark night on the streets of London with Wayne Cousins was because of one material fact, and this is what we are really sort of led to believe, because he had a warrant card and he had handcuffs on him. She was led to believe that by walking home from a friend's house at that period in time when she did that, that she was actually breaking COVID laws. And so much so did she believe that it, there was a potential that she'd broken the law because he was a warranted police officer and had his warrant card on him that she got into that car and she complied with his instructions. Now, had the incidents of flashings uh, been taken more seriously and had been dealt with quicker, speed is really key here, by the yeah. Metropolitan Police Service, he would have been suspended pending a full investigation and his warrant card would have been taken from him whilst he was suspended. He then wouldn't have had that on his person to have been able to show that to Sarah to convince her that he wasn't just a member of the public in possession of a pair of handcuffs, which anybody can buy online, but actually he was, uh, you know, he was able to convince her that he had, that he was a serving police officer because he had that warrant card. And that yeah. really is a key and fundamental point that should come out of today's sentencing. Now, I know that the independent inquiry will be looking at his uh, earlier offending and whether opportunities were missed to, to stop him. But is it now that, that the way that these police forces operate, they are asking far more serious questions at an earlier stage for these offences? Yes, they are. I think the, the question that you asked previously around, you know, these were often put down as sort of public order type offences. Um, we do now know that very often with rapists and with people who commit very serious sexual assaults, there have been warning signs in advance, regardless of whether they are a police officer or not. And so therefore, police really are responding now differently to incidents of flashing. And let's not forget that a week ago today, uh, the Home Secretary published the updated strategic policing requirements, which is now for the first time ever included violence against women and girls. Though that means that people like myself, police and crime commissioners, and also chief constables will have to publish an annual report on how police forces are prioritising and dealing with improvement and action plans on yeah. how they're tackling violence against women and girls, which of course includes rape and serious sexual assaults. Donna, uh, Hampshire Police and Crime Commissioner, thank you very much indeed for bringing us your reaction to that sentencing and of course what was said in court. Thank you very much for your time.